there you are. <laughs> we'll get through this. We will get through this, Nancy. <laughs> you know, I know. We will be a lot better in person on in person oh, on stage. Absolutely. So so I'm at the cottage here with my uh, handy husband, mm -hmm. with my handy engineer husband, and I told him yesterday about the research that you shared with the functional MRI mm -hmm. and the and how improv and hypnotism in a state of hypnosis, we uh, the part of the brain, the lateral prefrontal cortex, that self-monitoring, self-guardedness is suppressed. Mm -hmm. and we started to really wonder why that is, how how that evolved anthropologically or how, you know, I mean, it's a pretty cool neurochemical or, or to have the, the human brain to have an off switch that when we are willing to be hypnotized, we can allow our state of being to be altered by another. Yeah. And how do we, how do improvisers do it naturally? Indeed. How do we, in a situation that I, I think would frighten most people being in front of an audience um, who want a show that you don't have, you would think <laughs> there'd be, um, I don't know if it's a, a uh, survival <laughs> thing. <laughs> no, there's this, there's this theory that, um, you know, when um, people are in dangerous situations and um, they see their life flash before yes. their eyes. Yes. There's this theory that it's the brain downloading everything they've ever learned to see if there's anything that will help get out of this particular predicament. I've and never I, heard that. Really? Yeah. And I just wonder if that happens in some way while you're improvising, where you go through everything you've ever... Because there have been times where I make a reference and I go... Well, Clarabelle, the clown from Howdy Doody, what the? Um, so, yeah, I just wonder, the brain, it's just uh, wacky. Oh, it's That's fascinating. Yeah. I love that. I love that. What, what a massive, you know, and I can, uh, I, I'm a visual person, so I immediately go to the metrics of everything yeah. downloading at the last, you know. <laughs> I know when I'm learning lines or something, I kind of see it on the, when I'm first learning it, I see it on the page, uh, what particular page it is um, until you know, I've, I've got it down and then it becomes part of my character. Right, right. <laughs> yeah, like I'm a real actor. So when you did get your start in Vancouver in improv, tell me what, tell me a little bit more about that. What was your history there? Tell, tell me about your first improv class and you know, how I that I was at theater school at studio 58, Glengarry yep. college. Um, a friend of mine was doing a play reading at the waterfront theater. And part of that uh, evening was this demonstration of a thing called theater sports. Okay. So uh, uh, Keith Johnson, had come in and given uh, some workshops. And so um, so I, I saw this uh, demonstration and just thought it was like the coolest thing in yeah. the world. Yeah. And um, it's interesting. One of the uh, people who was uh, improvising, uh, had I've just reconnected with him like in the last uh, eight years. And he directed me in the production of um, art. No way. Uh, Morris Panitch, yeah, a very uh, respected playwright. And uh, so, yeah, so uh, so I thought, oh, uh, that'll be interesting. And then I think it was a few months later, they started an improv, they started a theater sports league and they had uh, classes. So I took a class and then they said, do you want to play tonight? And I went, sure. <laughs> so uh, at that point they had, they would have a rookie match and then they had the veterans that I'm thinking after a month, I don't know how they qualified as veterans, but still. <laughs> um, so I, I did very well in uh, the rookie match and they needed someone for the uh, veterans. So I, I joined one of the teams there and uh, did well again. And then just, um, it just became, that was my weekend. That was the thing I was looking forward to, to going out and doing theater sports at City Stage. And then uh, we started doing um, plays. And it was still, um, I mean, when we first started, it was like, it, it was literally pulling people out of McDonald's and saying, come see this. And then within a year, 
it was lined up around the block and it wow. was a big thing. And yeah, I made uh, some good money from uh, from improv in those days. My God, that's not a line we hear often. <laughs> no, no, it isn't. It isn't. I I, I could pay rent because uh, <laughs> I was playing a lot, and um, it was a um, a co op. So everybody oh, was cool. Was it? Yeah. So we 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 split the uh, the funds, and then when we started doing shows. Yeah, so it was uh, uh, my best friend. Then I met my best friend there. Um, and a lot of uh, his name is Jim McClarty. He's now living. Okay. He moved to New Zealand to start uh, to take over theater sports there. Uh, oh, cool. 20, 30 years ago. Oh, more. Really? Uh, like 35 years ago. Yeah. We have uh, a ton of Aussies coming to this. It's a fantastic improv community. In, oh, absolutely. in Australia. They're absolutely. crazy. They're yeah. so much fun. I know a couple of Australians, uh, and uh, some, uh, a Canadian who lives in Australia, Patty Stiles. Oh, I know. I know. Yes, yeah. yes. Um, yeah, we um, have worked together a lot. So, yeah. And it's um, and when I started, it wasn't all uh, theater people. We had a guy who worked uh, for the cable company. Uh, we had a couple of writers. We had uh, some students, but it wasn't. It was a fair mix, and then it, as time went on, it became more, uh, we had more theater people. But at the beginning, it was just regular people who. Right. Yeah. Isn't cool. that amazing? We have, um, in my town, Hamilton, that you know that is experiencing sort of a cool arts resurgence, yeah. and in our. Uh, lots of good stuff happening in the hammer and the, and the improv classes when I go have a couple waitresses, a physicist, a, you know, a, a, a bunch of theater people, but, uh, and then a couple business people. Like it's just, it's a, it's a wonderfully eclectic group of yeah. people just to come and connect and communicate and tap creativity. And interestingly, an intuitive knowledge that rarely sees the light of day. You know, yeah. I find I find your earlier comment so intriguing about, um, you know, that on our death, all of that, uh, all of our memories come to fore. I mean, I think that what improv does is tap a different intuition and and creativity that that comes out only when we when we connect with another. You know, yeah, it's pretty it's pretty cool when everybody has the same joke at the same time. <laughs> And then it's like, okay, <laughs> I, I know we all have it. Are we going to be nice and let someone else say it? Or are we? There have yeah. been a couple of races at times where <laughs> I get so excited. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Is there something, What talk about the, um, everyone loves whose line. And in fact, the uh, one of the things that I'd like to chat about on Friday, you know, when I finish compiling all of the stats, when we chat on the Friday evening of the conference, the views of YouTube, whose line reruns are just off the charts, right? Like it's, it's yeah. crazy. It's like, I feel we should be richer somehow. <laughs> I yeah. agree. Worked Indeed. out. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and um, that was the reason the show came back. Uh, Brad and I found our audiences were getting, like, you know, uh, 10, 12 years into our tour, our audiences were getting younger, which doesn't happen. And it was because yeah. kids that hadn't been born during the original show were catching up on YouTube. And there, there was this groundswell. And that's how we ended up on a youth network like CW. Um where we actually could have sired every other star of the other show. Awesome. Yeah. Amazing. Amazing. Yeah. The uh and and I understand that you have just completed the last Who's line a couple months ago. Is that right? That's in theory, that is what has happened. Um, I actually um um our surprise um guests for lunch yesterday yeah yeah actually uh one of the producers from who's line and they've ordered another season but oh, we don't good. have to shoot anything because they still have so much stuff <gasps> that ha 
It's insane. It's insane. It's insane awesome. that over the pandemic, the show was still happening and we hadn't shot for like years, a couple of years before that. Um, and all the CW is, uh, beca is becoming a, a non-scripted network. So, you know, there's always a chance it will come back. It's hard to say. I don't know. Well, here's hoping. I mean, because that is just, it's uh, um, it's a completely, it's unlike anything else out there, despite the fact that, you know, now there are Netflix shows with as improv and dry bar comedy and, you know, all of that, all of the other uh, initiatives that are trying to, trying to replicate maybe whose line in some form. Yeah. Or yeah. Right? Yep. Yep. Yeah. The um, what are the uh, what are some of the things from whose line that just slayed you? You know, like that. Just uh, you and Ryan had a had a crazy connection. Wayne was so talented. Everyone was just you know off the charts talented. But was there one? Was there one scene, one day, one crazy adventure that you? <laughs> well, I I mean the thing, I, and especially with the show, because. Uh, I th when we we're shooting, it'd be like 22, 24 games. So, we're, yeah. and it was just one after the other. So nothing, right. you know, it, not a lot of it stuck because you're <laughs> just surviving the next one. The one that did was the scene with Richard Simmons. Um, only, well, for many reasons. <laughs> I mean, yeah. he was just so committed and it, and it was lovely. But the scene where, I, the part where I was using him as, a jet ski. I know. I know this one. <laughs> From the, I mean, the final project that you see, they had to cut down that laugh because it was like two minutes of Richard's head bobbing at my crotch, which is an incredibly long time. Like so, so long. So that stuck in my mind. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So that, and uh, you know, little things where uh, when I could break up Ryan or the other guys, it always right. felt good because you know they were pretty jaded and they've seen <laughs> That's everything. Right. So it was always, but it was also a reminder of oh yeah, because we don't know what comes next. Of course, we're going to laugh at things that um, <laughs> will be as, just as surprised as the audience. So, but it was really yeah. good when we when I got. <laughs> So great. I love the fact that as humans, you know, laughter being our language before we had language, it the, laughter in the form of just losing our ability to stand, you know, when we just fall over and, and some of the scenes that I recall from whose line with Wayne or Ryan, and they just, uh, and they just lose it, right? They absolutely, yeah. they, lose their balance nothing yeah. and, and making uh drew cry was always special oh, because he would just he was such a fan of the show it was just lovely but the yeah. times where yeah he was in bad shape <laughs> <laughs> he was so th the fact that applied improv now is this um learning modality for businesses and we're we've got it in medical schools and law schools and now improv is in the curriculum of engineering schools in Carnegie Mellon Northwestern MIT you know what this it is there's some street cred now and yeah. we are seeping into uh academia and corporate and tech and everything how do you think that how did that contagion happen what, what no, I'm going to say whose line started at all. It just because <laughs> when I think of academia, I think of who <laughs> um, the kissing one, cousins there. Yeah, <laughs> could, I I don't know. It could have been just um, one person applying it to um, engineering or whatever, and going, "Oh, wait a minute, I." Thinking outside the box just opened up this entire new um, area to me. And maybe it caught on from there. Or maybe, I mean, I'm constantly telling people, you know, take improv classes. Even if you're not going to be an improviser, it's right. such a great life skill. It's a great uh, way to get over little obstacles that you're meeting just to sort of figure out, just to have different options instead of not... Uh, you have a, a problem and you just keep going at it the same way over and over again. Uh, with improv, you sort of learn to you know, try from a different angle, think 
and it may not lead somewhere, but it may. Uh, it may lead to a, a, a whole new outlook. And um, so, Amazing. yeah, maybe Amazing. just someone saw the the possibilities of uh, science and improv. Because I know, I mean, some things, cooking is great for improv. Right. Baking, not so much. <laughs> because you need the, you need the actual, you can slightly improvise but you need the exact scientific measurements of the how to make the cake and things but you can certainly um improvise around that maybe with flavors right uh, i don't know what my point was but just um i think it's i think venturing it's about out time into that, venturing that, out into that uncertainty and learning a different way and try and yeah. the experimentation is absolutely part and parcel of the scientific method. That is exactly what it should be and exactly what improvisers do. Exactly. Yeah, there's no way science and art, I think that'd be a very happy marriage. <laughs> With some problems right. throughout, but... <laughs> a little few speed bumps along the way and oh. broken, broken beakers. <laughs> yeah.